I want to talk about the dangers of using a checkpoint or a snapshot. Now, starting in Windows Server 2012 R2, Microsoft changed the name from snapshot to checkpoint, but everybody else calls it a snapshot. So why did they change it? Who knows? It's just Microsoft being Microsoft. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a checkpoint. In this, in this particular case, it's Windows Hyper-View, but it works the same in you know, uh, VirtualBox and VMware and, and all those different things. Uh, but uh, I'm going to show it to you in Hyper-View. So I've got this particular server selected, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Action. You could also right-click on it as well, and click on Checkpoint. So uh, what's going to happen is, on the right-hand side, you see right here, it's creating a checkpoint. And what it's doing is it's creating a completely separate file. So what happens is, is my operating system as it is running right now is not going to change that file whatsoever. Any new changes such as adding files, adding programs, deleting things are going to happen in the separate file called the checkpoint file or the snapshot file if it's another uh, brand. So you can see it's done at about 25%. It usually depends on the speed of the server. It could take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the speed and the size and, and that kind of thing. So once that's done, then you're going to see a separate file. Now, I've already got a checkpoint created on another uh, virtual machine, so I want to show you that. I've got that on this particular Windows 10 client. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a Windows 10 or a Windows server or uh, a Linux. It doesn't matter. It all works the same way. So you can see I've already got a checkpoint that was created earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the files that have been created for that checkpoint. And here they are. So on my client one, virtual disks, instead of just seeing one VHDX file, I see two files. And they're both ending in VHDX. One is a VHDX, and the other is just dot VHDX. So this one with all the funny letters and numbers, that was automatically named when the checkpoint was created. And any new changes that are made are going to be made to that file. But I can also merge those files together. So let me merge those together. And then we'll talk about what the dangers are of not deleting your checkpoints and how you use this uh, responsibly. So I'm going to highlight my checkpoint file. And I'll go to Action. And once again, you could right click on it as well. I'll go to Action, and I'll say Delete Checkpoint. Now watch what happens. It says Merge in Progress. So it's merging those two files, the VHDX file and the AVHDX file. And that usually takes a few minutes as well. And once that's done, then we'll just see one file instead of two. So why do we need checkpoints? Well, the responsible way to use a checkpoint is just before you go to make any kind of major change such as running Windows updates, a new application installation, maybe an uninstallation of something, uh, registry changes, any types of major changes where something could go wrong. Or a driver update is another good one, like if you install a new graphics driver for some reason. That could cause things to go haywire if it's not right. So it's great. Just before you make those changes, you do exactly what I showed you there. You go in, you create the checkpoint or snapshot if it's another application, and uh, then it'll create that separate file. Then you go in and you make all your changes, which is great. Then when you're done, go back and choose to delete the checkpoint file or the snapshot file. Because if you don't, then what happens is, is all the changes that happen after creating your checkpoint are going to happen in that separate AVHDX file. And you'll end up using a ton more space. So let me give you an example. Let's take a look at this graphically as why it is that a checkpoint file is not a good idea to keep. So here's our original operating system checkpoint file. And in a previous video, I talked about a differencing disk, and it uses the same type of technology as a differencing disk. So up until this point, everything that's being done to it is being done to this original file. So we'll just call this one file one, for instance. And all the changes that are being made are being made to file one. Now you've gone ahead and created a checkpoint file. It's created this AVHDX file, right? And when you create that AVHDX file, now this particular one stays the same. So this one is five terabytes when you get started. And what'll happen is, is that over time, those changes are all gonna take place over on the AVHDX file. And let's say you delete two and a half terabytes, right? 
And then over time, you add two and a half terabytes. So you should have a net of five terabytes because you've subtracted and you've added the same amount. However, it's not going to do that. It's going to now have a total of seven and a half terabytes because it never deleted it off the original file. That file never changes as long as you have a checkpoint. So you could end up filling up the host's hard drive because all the changes are happening here and nothing's happening here. So you want to merge those files together and when you merge the files together then you won't have any of those issues. We're back in our Hyper-V Manager and you see that the merge is still happening with our Windows 10 client checkpoint that we had deleted earlier but the file for file server that checkpoint has been completed so it has created that second file that AVHDX file now I can run Windows updates on that and then once it's done, I'll go back in and delete that and it'll merge those files together just like what's happening on Windows 10. So that is how and why you want to manage your checkpoints and snapshots and not leave them on your server because you could cause yourself a lot of problems. Now I did have a client who at one point left the checkpoint, or in this case it was a snapshot on VMware, on their server for three or four years. And they called us one day and said, hey, we're out of storage space and we don't know why. So I went there, and sure enough, this, these two files existed, and their, their uh, host hard drive had filled up. So I went in, and I deleted or the snapshot, and it merged the files together. And then uh, what happened was they had several terabytes free. How long did it take to merge? Well, in this case, you see the merge is only going to take maybe another 10 or 20 minutes. But with this client who had their snapshot on the VMware server for three or four years, that took two days two days to merge because it was so large. So that is uh, one example that you should follow when you go and create your checkpoints and your snapshots. Delete them when you don't need them.